is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back at Copart. We're going to jump into another Copart walk around with number one on my list. I told you guys. I told you. I'm, I'm still looking. Well, this may be the perfect opportunity to buy something super cheap and exactly what I'm looking for, I, I think. This is a 1987. It fits right in with all the cars I've been buying lately. Cars from the 80s and the 90s. This is an 87 lean machine. I do believe this is based on like a Chevy G, I don't know, maybe it's not a G platform. I'm not entirely sure, like a, like a G30, like a one ton platform, something like that. I think this also has a 7.4 liter. I think that's a 454. It's only got 25,000 miles on it. I know it's an 80s model, but 24,000 miles. It's got hardly any miles at all. Hell, the tag is still good on it. The body looks to be in perfect condition, and it's a pure sale. This thing doesn't have any busted windows. It looks practically new, aside from some peeling stickers from sitting out in the sun. This thing looks phenomenal. Um, how's the tires? Look at the tires on this thing. It's got great tires. I wonder if it's got any leaks. Let's see if we can get you under here. And I don't see anything dripping off of here at all. Nothing. She's old. What do we got under here? Oh, wow. Okay. That's kind of cool. Somebody, it looks like somebody recently did the air conditioning on this. Take a look at this. Tell me that does not look like a brand spanking new condenser, a relatively new transmission or oil cooler. Yeah, somebody's been working on the AC on this. Yes, they have. Okay. What's going on in here? It looks like a new battery too. Relatively new. Good Lord. Okay, it's got two batteries. This thing looks solid. Now, the only issue is it's not a run and drive, but it is a pure sale. And if it really only has 24, 25,000 miles, ooh. Oh, <laughs> hold on, maybe this isn't exactly what I was hoping it was. Look at this like shag carpet. You guys remember this? Remember shag carpet? Let's see how the floor feels. Is this plastic? Yeah, plastic over the carpet on the steps. A little bit of plastic coming through here. This is just some junk somebody threw in here. I don't know what, I thought this was tore up. It's not. That's just some junk that somebody threw in, some junk carpet. Look at, look at this. This is like a time machine. Let's move that out of the way and close this. Look at this. What? This is, this thing looks new and it smells, I mean, it smells fine. Bottle opener. Oh, it's got plastic over all of the carpeting to keep the carpet nice. You got your bed back here. Look at this. Hell, I could do this, guys. I could do this. I've been looking for one for a while. This might be, this is perfect because it's a hoopty. It's an absolute hoopty that I think is still kind of cool. The roof is not broken. You got your sink right here. What is that, propane? That's probably a LP gas gauge. There's your sink. I, I love it. Fridge, let's see what the fridge looks like. How bad is it? Yeah, it's a, it's a little rough, but not horrible, not horrible. It doesn't smell the best, but that's okay. Okay, let's move around to the front. What do we got here? We got a water pump, battery, holding tank one, holding tank two, fresh water. All right, let's see if we can scoot up a little bit past all this junk that's trying to rip my clothes. We have a nice couch with seat belts. Look at these old, these are GM seat belts, right? Or are those Ford? It's hard to tell. I think those actually look like Ford 
seat belts, so I could be wrong. Oh, no, it's a Chevy. It's a Chevy. You got a couple captain's chairs right here. I don't know what this is. Oh, a table. It's a flip-out table. Look at that. How cool is that? More captain's chairs. Do we have a TV up here? No? What is this? Another bed? There's a bed up here. I don't know how... I'm not sure how that would work. I guess you just pull that out and you can lay it somewhere. You got an old Zenith television set right there. Oh, man. Classic. Sheets. Cigarette lighter adapter. Guys. <laughs> this thing is great. What is this? A road atlas. A lot of books. Probably some service records. Yeah, we're going to keep that stuff in there. Somebody put the service records and stuff in here. This would be your engine cowling right here. If you need to work on that hefty 7.4, you would unlatch this from the sides and up there. And this whole console will come out. You have access to probably the bell housing and the engine as well. Sitting over here. Yeah, this really does look like 24,000 miles, guys. The seat has no wear on it at all. There's really no wear up here. At all, the steering wheel looks brand new. It's got a TAC, a Sun Pro, a Sun Super TAC 2. You've got a slew of keys. I'll bet this is an estate type of deal, guys. GM keys, of course. Yeah, I bet you this is an estate type thing where it just sat for... Oh! Choke light is on. Wow, you've got a Cobra... Can we turn this on? Oh, dude. No way. No way. <laughs> Hold up. Let's turn. Breaker, breaker, 10 4. Do you copy? <laughs> no, no way, man. This is so cool. You got your old um, Audio Vox. Okay, okay, okay. We got your audio box stereo there. Look at these gauges. I would be willing to bet it's probably got an issue with the fuel. I would I would bet money there it's probably got rotten gas in it. Should we try to start it? I feel like we should try to start it, man. This thing is awesome. I, I really want it. It's a pure sale. All right, so I decided I'm gonna go ahead and try to give her a start, at least a crank and see what she does. Uh, is this carbureted or would this be throttle body fuel injected on a 454? I'm thinking the 454 was probably still carbureted, but there's no real way to know without popping this cowling off. And I'm not trying to do that sitting here. So let's just pump the gas a couple times. Dude. Yeah, it didn't sound like it was, it was doing anything at all. I'll bet if we pop this cowling off and we forced some fuel down the throat of the carburetor, I would almost bet you money this thing would run. So I decided to go ahead and just pull this back. It was already unlatched. All I had to do was scoot it back. But remember I said somebody had been working on the air conditioning? The whole AC system is brand new. Look at that. Brand new compressor. There's your starter solenoid right there. And there is your four-barrel Rochester Quadrajet carburetor. So as I said, it is definitely carbureted. And down here, your valve covers and everything, that's your 454. Back here would be your high energy ignition in the very back. Everything is very accessible and relatively easy to work on in this thing. So I'm, I'm willing to bet if we have a, well, you know what, there's a, no, it's not, it's not broken. I would be willing to bet, guys, that whatever's wrong with this is fuel related. It probably wouldn't take much to get it going. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a booster pack on it real quick because the battery sounded a little weak. And let's just see if we can get it to fire up. And then I'm gonna go ahead and throw a bit on this bad boy regardless. All right, let's try it again. Now remember, this is gonna be a mechanical fuel pump. So if it's been sitting for years and years, it could take a while to get the uh, fuel from the tank up to the carburetor. No. 
I think she's gonna need a couple uh, freshly charged batteries and some fresh gas. I guarantee you this thing will run. There it is. Told you. I told you. I told you she'd run. <laughs> it just took a while to get that gasoline from the tank up to the front. Guys, this is a pure sale. A pure sale. And it's listed as a non-runner on Copart's website. You just got to know these things, man. You got to be able to spend a little time with them. This is, this is it right here. This is, listen to her purr. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. We got good oil pressure, good voltage, fuel. Kick down that carburetor a little bit. Oh, the sound of that old 454, man. How about putting an exhaust on the motorhome? I think that would be epic. 454 sound great. So here it is. I want to show it to you right now. So you don't think I'm messing with you. There it is. Oh, oh, the pure sale is gone. It is a 1987 Chevy P30, not a G30, a P30. 25,000 miles. List says mechanically damaged. Donated vehicle, but it's at a minimum bid. Damn. Okay, well, I wonder what that's going to cost. We should try out this air conditioning, though. The uh, the AC button has kind of fallen under the dash here. Let's let's turn on the let's turn on the air conditioning and see if it works. All right, I got the AC on max. I don't think the air conditioning is working. Not a deal breaker for me. There's a. Uh, there's mouse crap in there. Do you see that? It may be an entire dead mouse sitting in the vent there. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think the AC is working, although it may... It may become... Hold on. It is. Yeah, I think the AC is coming to life. Okay. Let's put a... I've got the e-brake on. The brake pressure feels good. The pedal feels like it should. It, get, it went right to reverse, right into drive. Power steering, feels good. The tachometer, well, she's seen better days. Let's put that uh, e-brake off and let's see if it moves. It does. And the brakes do work. Wow. Forward and backward. Oh my God. Temperature gauge is coming up like it's supposed to. I'm going to set that e-brake again just for safety. The AC does work. It's not ice cold, but I mean, it does work. <laughs> I love this thing. Horn works. Oh, dude. Yeah, the AC is getting colder and colder as time goes on. This is crazy, crazy. I don't know how this is supposed to work, but I do wonder if this works. If you put it on a high cool and turn it to the coldest setting, does this do anything? No, this doesn't do anything at all. Someone's gonna have to tell me how this thing is supposed to work. It's got a filter right there. I've got it on high cool, but it does nothing. Maybe this is like you have to plug it in to an outlet or something to run this. Oh, that AC feels good. Oh, oh, guys, I think I found it. I think I found it. I did. Let's hop out real quick. Let's listen to this 25,000 mile bad boy run. Listen to that. Listen to that 454. Oh, that's a thing of beauty right there. That's a thing of beauty right there. Wow. This is the one. This is the one. I know it's not new. I know it's not fancy. And I know it's not expensive. But this is it, man. This is it. So let me get back up here. Jessica is going to kill me 
for dragging this thing home. She is, but I can't help it. This fits right in with the rest of my hoopty fleet. Nice and cold. Okay. All right, let's shut this off. If I can, this thing fell in the dash. Makes it kind of hard to, to get to. Let's shut her down. See if she fires right back up. Right on. Boy, she's healthy, guys. She's healthy. All right, number one on my list is down, and you can bet money I'm putting a bid on this bad boy. Let's move on to number two. Next on my list is a 2008 Cadillac Escalade ESV 6.2. This thing is dirt cheap. Like, okay, it's got a little front end damage. Is this really it? <laughs> okay, it's got a, a ding in the hood that if you really wanted to, and I probably would, you could fix. The hood has got hail damage. The whole vehicle's got hail damage. It's not severe. There's a lot of it, but it's little tiny. It's not that easy to see. You got a dent in the fender here. The bumper looks like it survived. All the Well, that tab's not quite, but this, yeah, you probably got to replace the fender. It's got good tires. Looks like it's got a set of Michelins. That tire is a little bit flat. It might air up. Then again, who knows? Maybe it won't. Headlight is definitely done, but this is minor minor damage 142,000 miles a little ding there honestly i mean everybody's got their own plan for stuff like this but for me if it's just minor damage like this i'm not even going to bother fixing anything other than probably that headlight assembly if you don't fix the headlight you're going to get water Oop, i about tripped over a broken bumper you're going to get water in the headlight it's going to wreak havoc and blow bulbs and maybe fuses so i would fix the headlight this thing is nice so far on the outside we have yet to check on the inside some hail damage so like to me because of the hail damage it doesn't really make sense to go fixing a whole bunch of stuff up on it um, if you really had to fix that ding, ding get you a pdr guy to fix it and you could probably i know that the paint is damaged but if you really want to try to pull this and straighten it out you could get a pdr guy to come and just kind of straighten this out as best as they can throw a headlight on it slap that bumper back where it belongs and drive it and i just i don't see the I don't see there being much value in going through and replacing body panels and it's already hail damaged. So what difference does it make? Oh, wow. That doesn't, uh, what? I don't know. Oh, it's stuck in the seat belt. Okay. Well, the interior is about what you'd expect. It's, it's kind of rough. So this just adds to, uh, ooh. Yeah. This adds to what I was saying. Give it a good detail. This is, this is rough. This thing has been worked hard. It's, this has had a hard life for sure. It's a great vehicle to beat on. I call them beaters with heaters. Maybe if you're lucky, it's a beater with a heater and an air conditioner. Ooh. That's not going to turn off, is it? That's a rod knock and that is not shutting off. Well, I was hoping that, hold on. It's quieting down. Steering feels good. This is, I think it's a wrap for this one. Brakes feel good. Goes into gear just fine, forward and backwards. Air conditioning is ice cold. I'm gonna give it just a little gas. Okay. Yeah, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Well, damn. <laughs> this is one I was actually interested in. Uh, this thing would be awesome. I mean, it really would. This would be a great... Uh, I mean, whatever you want to do with it. I don't need any of these guys. I have, I have like 15 cars and I'm adding to the collection constantly. Every week, I'm buying more cars. I don't need... I don't need anything else, but... I'm kind of becoming, you know, I shouldn't say it because it's actually kind of scary. I'm, I feel like I'm starting to cross a threshold between like picking up cars and becoming like a car hoarder. Every time I find a good deal on a car, I want to snatch it up and then park it down at the other house where I play with it for a minute and then I get bored with it and I, and I, I leave it there. I'm not even selling them anymore. <laughs> like they just sit at AR headquarters and, uh, and they collect dust. Um, and this one, 
This one, had it not been for a knocking 6.2, uh, this would have been on the list. I would have absolutely added this to the list. It is a beater. It's not pretty on the outside or the inside. Sit it down to the auto spa, give it a good detail, put a headlight in it. That's probably as far as I would have gone with it. Let's see if this, does this open? A lot of times these are broken. So the fact that works is really nice. The interior is so bad though, so bad. I mean, they live down a dirt road worse than mine. This is awful. This is, this is really, really bad. I don't know, if, how do you close it? You just pull down on this or? No, is there a, oh, there's a button, got it. Is it still worth something? Sure, man. Uh, unfortunately, 6.2s aren't the cheapest. These, these, uh, these V8s are getting more and more expensive as time goes on, it seems. Everything's getting more expensive. Everything is getting more expensive. Uh, the price of cars and the price of car parts as well. This would have been a good one. Unfortunately, I'm not interested. I have too many projects to worry about trying to find a motor, replace a motor for this. Uh, if I was going to try to find one, though, I'll tell you who I'd call. I'd call J&J Auto Wrecking. Not sponsored, but I've talked with them in the past. They've been really, really good to a lot of other YouTubers. And uh, they, they sell great parts with uh, guarantee they're going to work. You're going to get what you're, what you're supposed to get. So if I was looking for an engine for this, I would absolutely call up J&J. And I'm sure they could hook me up with one. But we're going to move on and see what's next on our list. Last on my list, the 94 Chevy Suburban with some outrageous miles, if I remember right. I think this thing has over 300,000 miles on it, which is kind of why I want it. It's an early 90s, so it fits into the majority of the content I've been picking up lately. I've always loved this generation of Suburban. I mean, I love Suburbans in general. They are beautiful trucks, but there's just something... There's just something about these big, wide doors. This thing was so long. Oh man, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It looks like it's got uh, pretty good tires. Goodyear Wrangler. The body's decent. Could use a fresh paint job. Uh, then we got something else, a Milestar on the front. There's a little bit of hail damage to be expected in Oklahoma. You've got some burn through on the clear coat to be expected in Oklahoma. She's definitely not perfect, but a great candidate for a fresh paint job if it runs. Ooh, yeah. The interior's a little rough. Remember, this is before airbags. What is this? There's a picture stuck to the seat there. It, uh, you know, it smells a little rough. The headliner is decent, except for over on the driver's side. You could tell this thing, this thing was driven a lot. I love this old thing. I do. We're going to have to walk around this way. It's got some all-terrain, an all-terrain over there that's got a regular, uh, like, highway tire on the front. Oop. That is, this thing's been parked a long time, guys. Look at that. She has been parked a long time. Well, that changes things. I love, I love, love, love vehicles that have been parked. I do. Don't, don't get me wrong. I really do. Uh, look at that gross i love them because you just never know what it's going to take to get them going again you don't know what they were originally parked for this thing is like a big glass house i love it uh ooh, yeah ooh. <laughs> there are spider webs on the steering wheel <laughs> she's been sitting a while uh the seat you could probably find something similar to to this at uh your local pull apart or lkq or some Three hundred and fifty-one thousand miles on the odometer Oh, don't tell me she doesn't have keys. It's supposed to have keys. I checked. I swear it said it had keys. Are you kidding me? I swear this thing had keys. Uh, well, I don't want to swear because uh, most likely I'm wrong. But I try real hard not to look at vehicles that have no keys if I... Oh... Man, what a shame. Well, it's probably a 5.0. It's throttle body injected. It's been sitting for so long. Look at this massive ABS pump. Look at that old school technology. Look at the amount of acorns on the engine, on the manifold there. And then you come over here and you can see the rat's nest or squirrels most likely built them an entire nest up there. 
It looks like the compressor clutch blew itself to pieces. There are spider webs and mud daubers, and there's just this thing is. <sighs> dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it. I really thought this had keys. I at least like to crank them. I know you probably shouldn't. It, here's, I'm gonna put this out there one more time for you guys, for the people who get mad at me. People get so upset in the comment section because, oh my God, it's probably been sitting for 20 years. You just cranked it over and you probably just sucked up lots of goop and gunk into the engine. You clogged up the fuel injectors. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. All right, you have a point. You do, you have a point. I'm not going to sit here and say that you're wrong. You're not wrong. What I'm going to tell you is when these vehicles come to Copart and, and, and uh, other auctions, it doesn't matter dealer auction or not, when these vehicles come in, unless there's something written on it that specifically says do not start fire hazard or something, they will try to start every single car. I'm not the first one, guys. I'm not the first one that came out here and cranked them over. So don't get mad at me. These guys do it first. All right, they have to make sure it cranks. They have to see, verify whether it actually runs or not. So I'm not the only one out here doing it. And then you get people that come out here to look at all of the cars. Look around, look at all of these cars out here. I'm not the only person that comes to the yard and attempts to start cars. So after they're done with it and they list it and they throw it out here, people come through the gate and they come out here and try to start things too. It's just the nature of the beast, man. And yes, it can gum up fuel injectors and all that good stuff. But ultimately, on something like this, you only have two fuel injectors. They're super easy to replace. You have a fuel filter that helps keep things from getting past. But, you know, most likely, the fuel injectors are probably already clogged up. The fuel filter is probably gummed up as well with varnish. I don't think it would have started and it wouldn't hurt anything just to crank it and make sure the engine is not locked up. With that out of the way, I guess we're going to get out of here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry that uh, I was apparently mistaken on the Suburban. I do want you to comment below, though, on a couple things we saw today. I'm not interested in the Escalade at all. However, the Suburban it, it fits everything I'm trying to do on the channel as of right now. An older 80s, 90s vehicle. It's obviously been parked for many, many years. It has no keys. It's got rats, nests, and all kinds of stuff up under it. Should we buy it dirt cheap, try to get a set of keys made for it, and see if it runs, if we can get it to do anything? Comment below and definitely let me know on this. Next, that 1987 mean what was it called? The the Winnebago style, the P30 mean machine or lean mean machine, whatever. Comment below and tell me if you think we should get that. I definitely threw a bid on it. I just, it, it seriously, nobody's going to bid on that. Nobody's going to buy it. It's listed as mechanically damaged and a non-runner. So assuming I can meet that minimum bid, I could probably get that thing really, really cheap. I'm willing to bet I could get it for under $1,200. Under $1,200. Would you bid on that? For that price hell i'm thinking a 454 alone should be worth that you're getting a 454 and a transmission that runs great with next to no miles on it if nothing else the motor and transmission has got to be worth twelve hundred dollars and you get the entire thing with working air conditioning so comment below and tell me if you think that's a good deal or if you think we should leave the winnebago thing alone drop those comments below subscribe to the channel if you're not currently subscribed and share the video with your friends i would truly appreciate it hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed today's video until next time stay safe out there everybody i look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one